Good morning. De Beers has historically done an excellent job of manipulating world diamond markets by restricting the supply and carefully regulating the volume of diamonds that are available for sale across the entire world. That strategy is collapsing and so is De Beers itself. And the reason is because of booming artificial diamond production here in China. Bloomberg kicks us off with this news that De Beers cut diamond prices by over 10% as the company gave up their plans to put a floor under the global market. Bloomberg points to two problems here, the collapse in China's luxury market and a boom in man-made diamonds. But it's actually the same problem. China's luxury market is shifting to man-made diamonds, and most of those are made here. And the reason the lab-grown diamond industry is booming in China is not because of jewelry so much, but because of industrial need for diamonds. And even after the big price cuts, De Beers announced for their wholesale buyers, the world market is still far below that. The secondary market is trading diamonds far below where De Beers pricing is. This is a report on the industrial diamond market where China has built out a huge supply chain in Hunan province. Diamonds are the hardest known materials, so that makes them highly desirable in machine tools and for wear resistant coatings. Construction and mining equipment of all kinds, oil drillers and equipment operators who need to cut through metal or rock or concrete, they're using industrial diamonds to do all that work now. China makes most of those diamonds. The production of super hard materials is over more than 85% of the global supply. But the most expensive products come from Europe, North America, Japan, and Korea. Companies in Europe and North America buy industrial diamonds from China to put on high-end machines and tools. And this is a typical China supply chain story then, in two respects. Chinese companies serve a key part of the manufacturing process and own that entire step in the supply chain. And on the value chain side, it tends to be the foreign companies who make most of the profits on the products themselves. Chinese firms that produce industrial diamonds are always looking for new uses for them, for new markets. And it was recently discovered that the diamonds can be infused with nitrogen to make them even stronger and turn the diamonds into semiconductors. Artificial diamonds then have lots of valuable application in heavy industry and electronics, but they're also being successfully marketed as jewelry. Diamonds are still highly desirable as gifts, and women prefer natural diamonds to man-made ones. But there is a gap between what these consumers say they want and what they actually buy. In China, man-made diamond sales as jewelry is a boutique industry. A woman goes into a jewelry store, and a diamond is specifically manufactured just for her, tailored to her personality and style. And it costs a lot less money than a natural diamond, that's pulled out of the ground in Africa, especially after those stones go through De Beers price cartels. De Beers got into the market for artificial diamonds as well, but the prices keep falling. But the demand wasn't the problem. The demand is still high, but China can just build the diamonds for less and in large volumes. New technologies in China created a boom in synthetic diamond production and sent the prices crashing. And this goes to why consumers say they want a natural stone, but then they don't follow through. Lab-grown diamonds cost a lot less, less than half what a natural stone does. This chart shows how large a stone a buyer can get for $6,000. Natural diamond pricing was holding steady. That's the beer strategy at work to hold the floor on pricing, which isn't working lately. $6,000 can buy you about one 0.25 carats of natural diamond and over four carats of a lab-grown diamond. A buyer with a ring on her finger can hide whether or not the stone is from a hole in Africa or a factory in Hunan, but she can't lie about the size of the thing. It's there for everyone to see. De Beers is now trying to make a shift to produce industrial diamonds, but they're already far behind China. 
This analysis from Western analysts, remember, admitted that China's share of the lab-grown diamond market was at least 85%. China's internal estimates are 95%. The IDAC is the Industrial Diamond Association of China, which estimates that China has 95% of the global production of man-made diamonds, with 80% of that coming from Henan province. The industrial diamonds are processed differently depending on how they will be used. MPCVD is a process that uses microwave plasma and it's ideal for making diamonds used in semiconductors and in electronics that require high degrees of control and efficiency, such as in electric vehicles. These are pieces that we'll link to, which goes much more deeply into how the diamonds are made and all the uses for them. Lots of interesting stuff there, and you can read for yourself the problems that these companies present for De Beers. This is Ju Jai Gao in Sichuan province. Be good. Store up for yourself treasure in heaven.